Welcome back to the Discover Virginia Beach podcast, where we set out to highlight all there is to discover and what the Virginia Beach area has to offer for both tourists and locals alike. Today, we're joined today by local contemporary artist, entrepreneur, and real estate investor, Heather Gold with Golden Muse. Heather, welcome to the podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. We are super, super excited you're here. Yes. Um, uh, without further ado, let's let's jump right in because I know you have a lot to cover from your artistic journey and also to your e-commerce business. So let's get started with, with the art, shall we? Um, art is, is really a personal matter and, and at times can be very subjective. Heather, start by discussing your artistic journey with us. And, and I understand you graduated from you know James Madison University with a degree in fine arts. So we'd love to hear about your concentration in figure drawing. And if you could tell us a little bit more about how your education and you know, studying abroad in Southern France really shaped your artistic style. Absolutely. So I've been doing art since I was a little kid, but it wasn't until I studied in Southern France where I got to really study the human body, the female form. A, a lot of my models have always been females. So I've grown a deep appreciation for the female body. And then also kind of leading into I was a teacher's assistant for a social psychology course that gave us a subject that we needed to study. So I chose kind of like the psychology behind sexual kinks and fantasies, and that bled into my art classes. And then that started a whole series. And now I kind of find myself in this realm of finding my style of this like classy, seductive form but also still just expression expressing emotion and relationship dynamics and all that so that's where I'm at now <laughs> wonderful thank you for for highlighting that for us and I understand your preferred mediums are oil paintings and, and wood burnings and your work is often described as captivating elegant as you mentioned it's very seductive very personal mm -hmm. could you tell us more about your artistic process and really the themes that that inspired you and, and kind of what 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 that inspiration is, is is pulled from. Yeah, um, a lot of it is either personal relationships or just human relationship dynamics as a whole. Um, I typically will find a person who becomes my muse and therefore started my company golden muse because my last name is gold so i was like oh okay um so i'm always fixated on either a person or a subject or just a, a image in my head and i try to bring that to life whether it be with oil painting or even wood burning which i think is super challenging which is why i like it wonderful would you walk us through the process because I'm, I'm genuinely curious like what is that process uh, and how do you go about making a, a painting with, with uh, wood, wood burning, uh, you know, ingredients and, and oil painting as well? Yeah. Um, so typically they're very separate. Um, I'll explain just the wood burning process, finding a really good quality piece of wood, sketching out the image, and then going in with a wood burning tool, which I can kind of use like a pen. Um, but it's very unforgiving. So if you turn it ever so slightly too far to the right, you can burn the whole right side of the piece and just ruin it. And um, I, I, I like that element. I love just the, the process of it. it makes me feel connected with nature. It makes me just feel very creative. Um, and then coming in with either gold leaf or acrylic paint on top, I feel like it really just pulls it all together. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's, that's really fascinating, especially the whole, the whole form and the process that goes behind it. And uh, speaking of another process that you've recently developed, as you alluded to, is your new e-commerce business, Golden Mute. It, it's, exp it's exciting. You've ventured into the online world to sell your art, your prints, and I understand you have a pretty extensive merch line. Could you share more about this endeavor and how it's impacted your career uh, as an artist? Absolutely. Um, so this is my first time ever being a full-time artist. I've dabbled in so much, so many other things, but having the 
the time to create actual pieces of art is super important to me. So I was dabbling with the concept of do I invest in these really expensive equipment machines and and merch to store in-house or do I hire a third party uh, company to do print on demand? And I found that um, Printify through my Shopify account is perfect for that. So I'm able to create these new uh, merch items, prints, like high quality prints. I have large scale, small scale shoes, like everything that you can think of. I'm able to put my art and design on it. And it it's such a relief. Like it's a lot of work up hand, but then afterwards you can kind of take a step back and just focus on getting the word out. Absolutely. It sounds like the the online e-commerce business has really been able to allow you to express your art um, in, in several different avenues, which is which is super cool. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we here at the Discover Virginia Beach uh, Facebook group and, and podcast community really enjoy chatting with, with locals like yourself, Heather, just because there is so much out there, both on and offline. It's it's really cool to dive deep. So I'd love to chat next about how the art speaks to you and others. So um, it, it's always exciting to see artists adapt and evolve their style while maintaining you know, their own unique voice. Um, I, I understand recently you experienced, uh, you know, an in-person art vendor event here in the Virginia Beach area. How was the overall experience for you? And how do you plan to leverage in-person events like art fairs and farmers markets to showcase your work? Absolutely. The My first time ever doing a art fair was at this um, Pride Festival in Virginia Beach in the Vibe District. That was my first time ever doing a in-person art fair like that. I've done art shows, but never a art fair. <laughs> sure. And um, it was really cool just kind of thinking about the business side of like, okay, I have to have enough uh, merch. I have to have like, I have to have it in bulk, which is an investment. Having like the chairs and the tables and the tent and um, most events, um, vendors have to pay a certain fee so it was kind of nice that this specific event was free uh, so that gave me the encouragement of like you know what you have nothing to lose just go for it and seeing the payoff of having like most of my stuff just sold out I was like wow I could do this I could do like a few events a month um, but something that I did notice was even though people were drawn to my tent because of my style because of a lot of my seductive paintings and and the female form that was amazing but it also deterred other people because they're like oh it's not kid friendly let me like hide my kids eyes sure um, it is a little quote uh spicy content right yeah yeah <laughs> so i'm like hmm where's where's the line where do i want to be um, where do I want to take my art? I still want to stay with the female form. I still love that classy, seductive feel. Um, but I also want to have more options that are kid, kid friendly, family friendly, where I could uh, enter into more family friendly event events and um, and yeah, just do more. I want to do a whole bunch of the events. Absolutely. Yeah. And especially reaching a larger audience, both is, I'm, I'm sure in a lot of ways, very inspiring to an artist being able to express your artwork. Um, Heather, as, as a contemporary artist based in Virginia Beach, and, and you kind of already alluded to this, but I want to dive a little bit deeper. How has the local community influenced or has started to influence your artistic journey and the themes that you explore in your work? Oh, um, well, being an artist, I see a lot of push for uh, Virginia Beach art, like have it be beachy. And I just don't lean into it. I think I stand out by just having my own style. Um, I see a niche for it and I'm just going to lean into it. Um, but having the community of, I've been in Virginia Beach for about 12 years now. So knowing so many people and having such a strong network, of people that like want to see you thrive is really beautiful. I think it's inspiring for anyone that you know to see you not just go to art school, but also continue with a art career. 
Wonderful. Absolutely. And that's something really unique about this community that I don't think a lot of people quite see on the surface, whether we have our tourists, our vacationers, or, you know, people considering a relocate to the area. Um, mm -hmm. our, our community is, is way deeper than that. And there are a lot of avenues and, uh, you know, definitely a lot of uh, areas for growth and development um, with your own journey or with other businesses. Um, Heather, what role do you think art plays in building a sense of community and, and fostering connections among individuals uh, here in the Virginia Beach area? And I know you spoke briefly about the uh, traditional beach vibe art, so you feel free to elaborate on that as well. Um, well, especially with the um, invention of AI art and AI in general, I think that it reminds us how different humans actually are and how um, what keeps us apart is we have emotion and having artists that can create something that provokes emotion or expresses it something that you can resonate with it gives you a sense of connection and it also gives you an excuse to bring people together like i i look forward to any event that is surrounded by art or can inspire art and art shows, art fairs, everything. So it's important. Absolutely. Now, um, as we head into the, the last section of this conversation, um, I, I want to kind of highlight this as, as the different shades. Uh, there, there are different shades to art and there are different shades to interpretation of art. So Heather, your, your artwork is often described as, as captivating and, and seductive, as I've already mentioned, and, and can for, you know, not be the most family friendly in, in some regards, um, but that still doesn't mean it has its, it doesn't have its place, right? It doesn't have its, its unique artistic value. Could you share your perspective on how you infuse your personal experiences and emotions into your art and specifically going into the muse factor? Um, to, to, to create such really powerful and, and intimate connections with, with your viewers. Yeah. Um, so something that I personally plan on doing soon is to have, I want to host a art gala, something bigger than any art show I've ever done um, that is created to support the type of art that I want to show and also create a type of experience for the viewer. Um, I imagine like the perfect date night, something that you can take your partner, get super dressed up, red carpet event, go and watch live entertainment, have really high-end, classy, sexy energy in there and just look at the beautiful art. Um, I haven't found too many places that can give you that experience or that feeling and i i'm just going to go ahead and create it so wonderful <laughs> wonderful very much looking forward to that um that that's that's really really cool uh to hear um so in, in your exploration of the female form how, how do you approach the concept of empowerment and agency uh, considering the seductive nature of your artwork, and more specifically, how do you ensure that your portrayal of femininity is, is empowering and, and not just objectifying? Yeah, and there's definitely a fine line between, I don't want it to look like a, a pornographic scene, because um, I've, I've seen different artists that go more in that direction. That is its own um, niche. Uh, not yeah, just and that, lie, though, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And I definitely find that I already draw certain type of clients and I want to be more selective about, okay, how do I present my art? How am I presenting this woman? Um, is it kind of, is it tasteful? And I can't really describe how I go about making sure that it's tasteful, but I make sure that it's a point that that's my style. I will never go down um, the direction of it being pornographic because it's just not me. Um, and I would imagine that anything that I create or that I create in the future, it is something that lures you in and that you could proudly have on your wall, have in your bedroom, and it elevates the space. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And, and and seduction can can evoke, you know, several different emotions and interpretations, especially for viewers, you know, those who are maybe in couples or uh, individuals themselves. How do you encourage mm -hmm. viewers to engage with the seductive nature of your art in a way that invites contemplation and, and deeper exploration of the human experience? That's a good question. I think that we all, whether we're shy about it or not, we all have our sexual desires and that's a completely natural part of being a human. Um, so kind of leaning into the possibility of making someone nervous, just simply bringing up the topic or having it in front of you, it, it makes you question not just the artist, because I know I'm, it's, it happens. People are like, oh, who's this person? What she's about? Um, but it makes you turn inward and think about, okay, how does this make me feel? What does this provoke inside of me? And that, that right there, that space is very interesting because it's, uh, I call it the, the male gaze, but I'm creating it. So I'm creating how I would view a woman from a woman's gaze. So. Mm, fascinating, fascinating. Yeah, especially too, because art is so, it's such a personal journey, but there is uh, the tour guide, AKA you, the artist that that brings you <laughs> along that that uh, that sense of, uh, you know, your heart rates up. It's, it's something you might not typically see out in the open, right? Because it is a very personal, sometimes perceived as private matter. Um, so having art to reflect that, uh, can definitely give you the sense of maybe a little bit more comfortability for a viewer to mm -hmm. explore that a little bit more and, and to look inward or outward, you know, from the female gaze of, you know, just trying to see what journey you're bringing them along. So yeah, yeah. love it. It's super great. Um, so, so Heather, with that said, I, I as we uh, head to the last segment of our uh, interview, I re 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 really appreciate your time. Um, I have some rapid fire questions for you just to get to know you a little bit better. Um, okay. Let's start off with question number one, which is your favorite forms to paint or doodle could be uh, part of part of your brand or or outside of that as well. Um, um, part of my brand, I would just say. Um, just a female body, just whatever she's doing, as long as it's a female body, I like it. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, question number two is your favorite writing instrument and why? Writing instrument? Yeah, you, the tool the what? tool for painting your artwork. So that could be a writing instrument. I know you said the pen is not forgiving. So is there any other utensil that you use? Um, hmm, I, good old pencil. Pencil? Yeah, I love it. You can work so quick with it and get all a lot of expression and it's forgiving you can use an eraser <laughs> wonderful yeah yeah nothing like a good old eraser <laughs> and for uh the last one i have for you is what are a few techniques to help you get in the zone and paint whether that's listening to music or being out in nature uh, what what specifically helps you get in the zone um i have to play music like just if I play anything else, it's very distracting. So for me, playing whatever type of music that I want to also be conveyed in the art, I'll like play the same song on re on repeat if I if I need to. But definitely music. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, Heather, as we wrap up this very captivating episode of Discover Virginia Beach, we'd like to extend a virtual red carpet to you, our esteemed guest. Heather, is there, uh, th this is your moment uh, to share any exciting projects or products that you're currently working on. Uh, is there anything special you'd like to feature or any final thoughts you'd like to leave our listeners with today? Yeah, absolutely. I would highly recommend everyone to check out my website, goldenmuseart.com. I just launched a bunch of new products, whether it be rugs with my seductive art on it or magnets and prints. I have a bunch of new stuff. So just explore my shopping list. And, um, and yeah, I have a few more paintings that I have in the workings. Um, so just follow me on Instagram at goldenmuse underscore art.com and you can see my new series that's gonna 
be coming very soon. Wonderful. Super exciting. And of course, just a friendly reminder, if you are driving right now, please don't try and write that down. Check out the <laughs> description below because um, mm -hmm. you have all that linked over there to you as well. And that brings us uh, to the end of another episode of the Discover Virginia Beach podcast. A big thanks to our wonderful guest, uh, Heather Gold, and to you, our dedicated listeners, for joining us on this journey. We hope you'll continue to explore this, uh, Virginia Beach with us and look forward to sharing more and exciting discussions with you. Be sure to tune in next week as we uncover more treasures of Virginia Beach on our podcast series, Beyond the Boardwalk. Please be sure to visit Heather and her work in the description below. Thank you and take care.